I really started writing in a foreign language, uh, what I call writing, writing seriously and publishing. And um, it took me about 15 years of living in France and pretending I was a French woman and a Paris intellectual and uh, had no childhood uh, or no past to speak of and no connection to the English language apart from teaching it to upper civil servants. It took me about 15 years of that kind of behavior to get up the courage to write in my mother tongue. Um, and once I started writing in English, I came back to it. It was almost a foreign language to me. Of course, it couldn't be completely, but it was. I had really gotten out of touch with it. And therefore, it was as new and exciting to me and as audible musically to me as French was when I first started using it. And then I discovered that if I translated my work either from the English into the French or from the French into the English, I could um, improve it to some extent. That's another theme that I deal with a lot. It is um, transmission. So Fault Lines is, is very specifically about that, how we hand things down to from one generation to the other. But it's not about how a secret gets handed down uh, in the dark and whether we know it or not, as, as I've often heard about it. It's, a, it's about how completely unexpected the transmission is, how the fault lines, uh, the cracks go in completely unpredictable directions. And, um, and I've always loved that about life. You know, if I thought that life was predictable, I definitely wouldn't be a novelist. <clears throat> I might be, uh, you know, I might write books about sociology or psychology or something like that. But I, I love writing novels because I can deal with this completely weird uh, way, the the weird ways in which uh, we do things that were not on the program, you know. And uh, for example, a perfectly wonderful little boy like Randall uh, at age six can grow up to be a perfectly mediocre. 30-year-old, and uh, conversely, <laughs> a very monstrous child like Saul at the beginning of the book, you know, if he meets the right teacher or, or woman uh, at some point in his trajectory, he might turn out to be an absolutely marvelous guy because he's, uh, he's bright, you know. So uh, you can't tell what people, how people are going to use what they've received from the former generation. You can even you know, what, what is resilience? It's become a sort of a buzzword uh, in psychology rec in recent years. But what does it mean? Uh, why do some people have it and some people not have it? So then you haven't explained anything. And you're dealing with individuals. So that's the miracle for me is that these individuals do actually come and talk to me. And uh, for fault lines in particular, I, I think I've never been so terrified in my life as writing fault lines. I'm very glad to be out of it. It's been two and a half years since I finished it. <laughs> and I'm not ready to start another novel. Because um, maybe because the children, the characters were children here. And uh, I experienced all the anxiety and, uh, and anguish of uh, being that, that high. Um, being able to talk and think and perceive and register a lot of what's going on in the world around me and not being able to understand it and not being able to understand why adults are so upset and so uh, unpredictable and so brutal and I think that children have a lot of um, ways of protecting themselves against that that I didn't have as an adult writing in chil children's voices because uh, they can sort of escape into imagination and denial and play and uh, and I felt I was uh, receiving this the brunt of this violence uh, directly and especially the anxiety and the re readership response which I have which has been overwhelmingly positive to the book in Fran in France and French Canada um, has also been overwhelmingly reassuring to me because, I mean, not to me as, personally as a writer because of my writer's ego, but because um, I, it's made me realize that people know childhood is a very serious thing. 
often we <laughs> talk about uh, kids as though they were silly or as though um, you know they don't know what life is about and so and the fact that people really entered into the book and identified with those four children and identified with their pain and their also their wonder I mean it's not completely dark or anything like that there there's bedazzlement and uh, joy and love going on in the book as well but it's serious and uh, and I was really deeply moved to see that people could uh, acknowledge the seriousness of that time of life it's a very serious time of life the joy is serious too <laughs> but the fear is definitely very serious and I think a lot of our worst political problems in in what we think of as the real adult world come from that emotional cauldron that is uh, a child's heart.